Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Pits of Motorcast. This is your host, Dave. I got a lot of special guest, field author, front engine director, driver, John Lorbecki. How you doing, John? I'm doing good. How you doing? Not bad. So, you got to drive a Nitro Dragster recently, huh? I did, yeah. So, this uh, last week, I was my first ride So, I got the in Diamond Dave Miller's uh, front engine Dragster. Uh, so that was a big deal for me, kind of a lifelong dream that got uh, knocked off the list. It was quite the experience, so that was a, a long time coming and a pretty pretty cool deal. I was uh, pretty excited to get that one knocked out. That was on your bucket list? That was definitely, yeah. That's, uh, I've always thought in the Stone Stop and Field Cars are like the coolest kind of drag racing that's out there, both funny cars, altered, um, Stop Field Dragsters. I think that's just the uh, pinnacle of the sport right there even though it's not the big show stuff but I think on the cool factor that's that's really where it's at so I was pretty pretty stoked to be able to hop in the seat of that thing uh, I remember growing up um, you know, my my dad worked on Charlie Broyd's funny car in the 70s and 80s and he was always kind of around that stuff and um, I remember growing up there was a uh, uh, you know, Detroit's uh, funny car was sitting in the garage, so there's like pictures of me and like six months old sitting in that car. And, uh, so always been around it, and then to uh, eventually get the opportunity to hop in and drive one, that was a, a big, big deal for me. Oh, yeah, those nostalgia top fuel front edge drags, those, those are awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, you got like, like Jim Young and Timmy Conan and Diamond Dave and, you know, uh, Jason Greenwood, a bunch of great guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially really strong Midwest representation in that class. A lot of really competitive cars around here, so excited to keep it going and be able to uh, bring those ET times down and be able to compete with some of those names. Hopefully you see a couple of those guys at uh, Grove on uh, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, that's going to be the plan. Um you know, we got the we'll have the thirteen twenty legends down there. We'll have the fuel car down there that weekend, and yeah, hoping to put some good five second passes down and uh, being able to be right there with those guys. Now, now, are you going to be taking over the seat for Jim? I mean, Dave. Um, you know, Dave's still the primary guy on there. Um, I'm just getting my, my license and getting myself established, and um, eventually, yeah, I'd love to be the okay, full time guy. So I know he's he's getting up there. Yeah, he's getting up there in age. Yeah, he's getting up there. So, um, but right now he's uh, he's really one of my big mentors and kind of showing me the ropes. And, and you know, as long as he lets me uh, put on the fire suit, I'm more than okay with it. Yeah, so then we got uh, you know Doc Doc Holiday with the Telstar funny car. He's getting up there in age too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of. Go- a lot of those guys, kind of an older generation, but we got um, kind of a younger generation that's starting to step in, too, you know, with Jimmy Young and Greenwood and uh, those guys around the local area. So I'm hoping hoping I can be one of those next guys. Yeah, I'm hoping the Grove will get someone to uh, run against Stock Holiday. You know, we, need, we need another funny car since after Baz Young moved away to back to Australia. We haven't had anyone to run with Doc. Yeah, that'd be cool to have another funny car, another nitro car there. Uh, those are always, I mean, Doc's car is just beautiful. That is a really cool car, so it'd be, it'd be great to have another one next to him going side by side. Yeah, I think it would be cool if we get the shot down Hustler in there. Yeah, yeah, well, who knows, maybe we can track down one of those and can drive both. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> 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 so, so now, how, how did you uh, meet up with the 1320 Legends group? Um, <clears throat> see, I've known, uh, Bill Fustein for a long time. Uh, you know, I grew up driving junior, junior dragsters and, uh, his kids were right there in the same age group as me. So initially I knew them, uh, through that. And, a uh, few, well, I mean, this is over 10 years ago now. Um, we had a rear engine dragster, but my old man, he loves building cars. He's created He's built a ton of chassis in his life, and he's always wanted a front engine dragster. So he went out and he built this uh, the Dr. Jekyll front engine dragster. And at the time, we had a 
blown uh, blown Hemi on alcohol that was in it, and um, that car has kind of evolved over the years, and that was our first introduction where that car fit in with what the 1320 Legends was was looking to do. So, um, you know, as that group got started, that was just a perfect way to get our foot in the door and be able to be a part of that group. Yeah, that Dr. Shaco car makes a lot of noise, man. Yeah, it's a pretty cool car. We've uh, run our fourth motor and fourth different setup in that car right now. Uh, so right now it's just injected big block Chevy in there, but it's uh, it's always been been a pretty cool ride. Where if it's uh, if it's not a if it's not a blown Hemi in there, then it's at least something that'll do some pretty cool wheel stands and put on a show. Yeah, there's a lot of great cars in that group, though. You know, like the Pure Evil. That that's another. Yeah, group. Pure Evil. That's a fast car. Yeah. Now, is there is there uh, Mr. Hyde in the works? Yeah, there is. Uh, so um, we had it out the last time the 1320 Legends was out. We had a, you might have seen a, a red altered, a 32 Bantam altered. Uh, we've been built that car really go bracket racing, but it fits in with what the 1320 Legends is doing as well. Um, so once, uh, once I save up a few dollars, we can go get that thing painted up, and we'll have a, a Mr. Hyde to go along with the Dr. Jekyll car. Now, when you run those cars, would, would they be matching, match racing each other in, in, with the 1320 Legends? Um, yeah. So, you know, the other driver that uh, uh, helped build and is driving the Dr. Jekyll front engine drag steer, Kenny Hubatch. Uh, we get both cars down there. He can drive the dragster. I'll be in the altar. Go side by side. So a little Jekyll and Hyde racing going on. Cool. I think I think the kids will like that. Yeah, it should be cool. It'll be cool photo opportunities and um, pretty awesome to have two cars side by side that you know you're associated with and having a garage next to each other. Uh, just keep building those motors again going faster and faster and hopefully you know one day we got two seven second cars Jekyll and Hyde racing next to each other yeah those were the good old days when they, all the cars had their own unique name on them yeah it's pretty cool and you know 1320 Legends they do a really good job of having the named cars and the themed cars and uh, some beautiful cars in that class so um, you know that the red altar is lacking that right now it's just a plain red car but we'll We'll take care of it and do a nice big job on there and uh, sit right in with that themed themed car with like just like everybody else. So now, John, your dad, your dad's the one that got you into drag racing. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, he uh, Charlie Pruitt's the one that got him into racing, and then uh, so by the time I was born, I was going to the track just a couple months old and. Uh, he put me in a junior dragster when I was seven years old. Uh, he got me licensed in a eight-second rear-engine dragster on my 16th birthday, and then we've been driving, driving ever since then. So, you know, life has slowed it down a little bit with just college and your career, traveling for traveling for work. But uh, now that it's starting to settle down, being able to get some more time on the on the dragster, but. But the old man, he's been a huge part of it. He's uh, basically responsible for all the opportunities I've had in drag racing and very thankful and appreciative to all his uh, mentorship over the years. Now, has your dad ever raced himself? He did, yeah. Um, so growing up, I remember being, you know, like three, four, six years old, and he uh, he was racing VWs, so Bugfest at Great Lakes Trigger, that was always a big thing, but he had a... Uh, a 12-second chop top VW Beetle that he would race in the uh, pro class. Um, so manual shift in this thing against the uh, what is now mod. Um, and he did pretty well with that. So that was always a pretty cool experience because you know, he was the only import there racing against all the small blocks, big blocks, and, uh, surprising some of those people in the stands when they're like, oh, look at this thing come up. But then he'd rock like a little 12-second pass, manual shifting the whole way down. And then he built a uh, VW powered dragster and did pretty well with that with uh, the glide in it. And he was pretty competitive with the VW stuff. And then uh, basically, when I turned 16 years old, is kind of when I took over the reins driving. 
So you started driving his his car? Yeah, so when I was 14 or 15 is when he moved from the VW stuff over to a rear engine dragster with a big black Chevy in it. And uh, that's when I that's when I took over the reins there. But but he had a nice collection of VWs. He had this Chop Top 69 that he took around. I think it was a 69 by Chop Top VW. Um, that was a really cool car. He had a Carmen Ghia VW powered dragster. Uh, so basically I just helped him crew that as a kid, uh, all growing up and cheering him on. And when I was old enough, then uh, we kind of just swapped rooms. So what year did you get your dragster license? Uh, what year? Well, it was my 16th birthday. So... It's a while ago now, you know, I'm 34 now, so I've been doing it for a while. So how was your first time experience driving a front-engine dragster? Well, first time, first time driving a front-engine dragster was that Dr. Jekyll car. That's when we had a, a Kilpatrick built, lone Hemi in that thing, and on alcohol. So about 1,500 horsepower around there, and... I got, man, that thing was so much fun. So when we, when the old man built this car, he wanted that old school, uh, 1960s style, classic front engine dragster look. So he wanted the seat to be really low, big motor in front where no way you could see over the thing. Uh, and then he had a, made a shorty glide in it too. So the, the motor was really far back. So there's no way you see over this thing with a, with a big old blower sticking right in front of your face. Plenty of powers. You can do burnouts, you know, half track burnouts, no problem. And an absolute handful of them are going down the track. It's uh, it was just a blast to drive, a challenge for sure, and it definitely kept you on your toes. But you know, that was my first time breaking into the sevens, and that thing would just put a huge smile on your face by the time you got as you're coming back down the return road. So, what's the quickest ET you've had with that dragster? Um, with uh, with the Dr. Jekyll car, the fastest I had was a 730. I know it's gone 720, but I think my best time was a 730. Now, after all these years of uh, drag racing, John, what still keeps you passionate about doing it? Man, it's just, it's just fun. It's such an adrenaline rush, especially with the cool front engine dragsters. I just... Uh, the challenge that they are versus, you know, a conventional rear engine dragster. It's a bit of a gen- adrenaline rush, but it's, for me, it's a big family event, too. So there's only a handful of times I've been at the track without my old man there. So it's always a big family thing. It's a bonding moment for us, and it's just something that we can we can do as a family. And all the friends that we've had over the years, being at Green Lake Street, we our tracks, it's, uh, it's kind of an overall family event that, uh, that's turned into a great hobby. So the big family atmosphere is what you enjoy most about being a drag racer? Yeah, that's a, that's a big, really uh, enjoyable aspect of it. I mean, what I really enjoy is driving the car and the adrenaline rush, but uh, it's only a few seconds of the entire weekend, you know, so the other 99% of the time is uh, just being around people that you enjoy being around and uh, trying to put on a show for the crowd, competing, um, you know, like competitive spirit for bracket racing or, you know, with the, with the Diamond Dave car, hopefully, uh, go compete on, uh, on the heads up level. But it's been, um, all those different things. Uh, just a combination of all of them is what I, what I really enjoy about it. Now, what do you hate most about being a drag racer? What do I hate most? Um, uh, what I hate most is the financial side of it. So you kind of dictate it based off what funds you have available. And I'm just a lonely government employee, you know, so funds aren't really something that's been been uh, available a whole lot, but you do what you can, and uh, some great opportunities have presented themselves, and you kind of scrounge up the money where you can and, and uh, find a way to get out there. Now, if you were able to have your fans remember one thing about you, what would you want that to be? Uh, yeah, good question. I think, um, 
I think for the fans, I'd want them to know that we we really appreciate them, that uh, them being out there and cheering on and seeing their smiles on the face as we come down the return road and them cheering. And that's, uh, that's great to see, and that's something that gets the drivers all jacked up. Makes, uh, makes you want to do a little bit longer burnout, a little bit harder to launch, bigger wheelies, a little bit, stay in the throttle a little bit longer than maybe you should be. Uh, but put on a show for them, and I just want them to know that you know, we really appreciate their support. Yeah, that's all I hear from all the drivers that run at the Grove. They love the fans with the return road going right past them. Yeah, it's a cool experience, and it definitely has an effect on how you uh, want to put on a show for everybody. You know, and you want to make sure that they're enjoying themselves. So yeah, it's kind of tune up the car a little bit and try to try to put on the best show you can. Now, do you think you you can become a better drag racer? And if so, how would you achieve that? Um, I mean, absolutely. I mean. Uh, I think every driver can always continue to improve. Um, so the way for me to do that is just experience, get some more seat time. You know, we're, we're just starting this uh, this uh, top fuel front engine dragster experience, and uh, I know what I got to do is, one, just get more seat time, get more familiar with all the systems and uh, maintenance with the car, and... Uh, and just keep listening to the experienced guys too, and being able to pick their brains. Um, I'm sure with with all the mentorship that we got around that car, that uh, I'll definitely be able to keep getting better and better. Now, who are all the crew member, crew members for the Doctor Jekyll car? For the Doctor Jekyll car, um, really, it's my my dad and Kenny Hubach. Um, when we had that blown Hemi in there, Jim Kilpatrick was in there. Uh, until we blew up that motor, and, and ever since we've had just small blacks and big black Chevys in there, it's been uh, Kenny Hubedge and, and my dad, John Larbecki. Now, do you have any sponsorship at all? Um, right now, no. Um, as we get in with the top fuel car, we're going to need to get some, so we'll be we'll be looking. Um, I'm hoping to take like my military experience, maybe get associated with a veterans organization or something along those lines, uh, but. But no sponsors right now. I'll be looking forward to trying to get some though. Mm-hmm. Now, w- what what military did you serve in? Um, I'm in the Air Force, so I'm part of the Wisconsin Air National Guard. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for your service. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what would Labor Day weekend that'll probably be your first uh, big event with the uh, top fuel jacks, right? Um, actually, this, this coming weekend, so, um, this weekend we're going down to Iowa, and we're going to go down to Cedar Falls Motor Sports Park and, uh, go, go do some match racing against, um, the Irish Car Bomb. Yeah, Timmy Cohn and, uh, yep, that'll be it. That should be fun. Yeah. And then uh, we'll have a few other races. I think we're going down to Ohio and Cordova. Uh, so a few other races before we hit uh, Great Lakes Dragway again. Now, besides your dad, who who were who, what other uh, drag race drivers inspired you back when you started out? Man, back when I started out, um, and when I started out, that was really it. I was just trying to. You know, yeah, everyone looks up to their dad. I'm trying to just uh, impress him a little bit, take take the opportunities that, that your parents give you. So he was really the one growing up. Um, nowadays, though, you know, I got Diamond Dave is my big influence, trying to uh, kind of fill his shoes a little bit. Um, and he's been, along with uh, Dale Sir, those have been the, the two biggest mentors so far. All right. So, besides the Grove, have you ever raced at any other tracks? Um, yeah. I've uh, been down to Juliet, been down to Indy. Um, when I was driving junior drag series, if I qualified for the Nationals, go down to Indy, and that was always a huge race. Just uh, hundreds of cars down there. Just pretty cool when you were a kid. Um, but... That was, uh, that was like the biggest national event I've done. It was just as a 
junior dragster driver. Uh, but now as we get in with the with the bigger cars and starting this new experience, we'll, we'll get a bunch of new tracks. So planning on really hitting up the, the Midwest circuit here. Uh, try and get more established with uh, Jimmy Young's Extreme Top Fuel. And we'll be hitting all the Midwest tracks. Awesome. Now, when you're out on the starting line, John, do you have any pre-race rituals or superstitions when you're out there? Superstitions? No. I don't have anything like that, but rituals, absolutely. I always, um, I always try to do the exact same thing every single time. So, like, to, if I can, I like to have the same crew members out there, you know, lining up the, the water box. I like to be hitting the throttle at the exact same time, the same amount, going in with the same temperature. Um, basically just rinse and repeat every single pass for both consistency from the from the bracket racing side of it, but with the field car, your reactions just have to be so natural and so instinctive that you want to build those habit patterns and, and be doing the same thing every time so you can react quickly and not, not be mixing that up. So Now, what's been one of your most... Uh... Your most, what's been one of your most memorable moments with the 1320s Legends? Um, and there's there's been a lot over the years. Um, I think one of my funnest ones was uh, last year we were out with the Dr. Jekyll car and um, trying to get the one of the new motors squared away and kind of struggling with it a little bit, but we went out there and left the line and trying to get the basic of what we're trying to do is put the, get a better wheelie. And I remember launching against uh, Kenny Thatcher in his car and carrying the, carrying the wheels out for, you know, about 100, 150 feet and slapping against that wheelie bar hard enough where we broke the wheelie bar off. And as we're coming back down the return road, the wheelie bar's just dangling behind the car and the whole crowd's cheering and, and really appreciating it. So that was a pretty cool little moment that we were having a lot of fun with. Now, what what kind of preparation goes into getting that dragster ready for a weekend? Um, well, the Doctor Jekyll and the Alter they're they're pretty they're pretty easy overall. Very low maintenance on each one of those. Um, so it's been it's been pretty easy. Um, the fuel card is a different ball game, of course. That one is a ton of work, a lot of prep. You're taking that stripping the motor down, taking the clutch apart just about every single run. Uh, so that's a very, very different contrast there between the different cars. Now the fuel car, who, who are all the crew members for the fuel car? Um, so the Diamond, Diamond Dave's car, Dale Sir's a big part of it, Mike McDonough, Steve Duckworth, Rick Shepard. Um, and there's other guys in there. There's a, uh, uh, John, Dan, uh, so there's a group of, you know, six and nine guys that's a big part of that car and, um, been pretty consistent with the same crews for as long as I've known those guys. That's, we're going on, we're going on about 10 years now with them. Now, out of all those tracks that you're, that you were talking about, you have a favorite? Um, uh, Green Lake Straightway is always going to be his favorite. That's, that's like home plate for me. So that's my home track. Been going there since I was like months old. Know everybody, you know. Really uh, enjoy talking with Randy and Marcel. And I mean, I've grown up at that track, so I've been going there for over thirty years now. Um, that's always that's always going to be my favorite, no matter what. Uh, but definitely looking forward to experiencing more tracks, doing, uh, trying to get some sponsorship so we can go on a more of a national circuit and go compete with the fuel car. And, and go see what all these other tracks have to offer. Now, do you have any any other things on on a drag racing bucket list that you haven't accomplished yet? You did the field car. Now, any, any other stuff you have on a bucket list? Oh, I mean, the, the bucket list is always full. Uh, there's all kinds of things I want to go out and go achieve right now. So, um, really, right now, they're all going to be related to the, to the top fuel car. Um, so... Want to keep getting better in that car? Be consistently in the the mid to high fives. 
um, to get competitive. And then the big, big one, uh, once we're more established, man, I want to go win the March meet. It's like every other top fuel driver, man. I want to, I want to win the March meet and then, uh, just being able to keep compete on a, on a big level. So we got a, we got a long way to go, but I'm confident that we can get there. Now, you have any desire to ever jump in a funny car? Absolutely, funny car, fuel, all dirt, you name it. I wanna, I wanna go drive it. So, just uh, need some opportunities to present themselves. But if if that ever did present itself, I'd absolutely hop on that thing in a heartbeat. Now, how, how about would you ever race race in a pro mod? Pro mod, yeah. Um, I would honestly. There's nothing that I wouldn't want to drive. Uh, I think the nostalgia fuel stuff is the coolest. And what I gravitate to the most, uh, but absolutely, I mean, some of those pro mods are awesome cars. Oh yeah, I think it would be uh, a blast to drive. Watching the Chicago Wise guys at the Grove all the time, there's some badass cars in there. Yeah, man, they put on a great show, and they have for a long time. They've they've evolved big time over the last decade or so, and that's a uh, man. They they do a great job with the show that they put on. Yep, with so many different kinds of uh, pro mods in that group. Yeah, big time diversity in the in the cars that they're bringing, uh, the type of motors that they're running, and and they're putting down some big time times, like some five second cars in that group. That's that's no joke. Yep. Now, have you ever done any any eighth mile racing? You said eighth mile racing. Yeah, have you ever done any? Um. Yeah, really just a bracket racing. Uh, that's basically all eighth mile racing right now. So uh, both in a rear engine dragster and uh, what will be the Mr. Hyde uh, Ultra. Um, that's all the eighth mile racing I've been doing. So what? what's your preference, quarter mile? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, quarter mile is where it's at. It's the, it's the way drag racing was intended, and uh, that's definitely the preference. Now, did, did you make it up to the Grove for the out, out of sight drags? Uh, nope, wasn't there. Um, I'm sure I was working during during that one, but um, heard they had a great showing, and I know a lot of a lot of cool cars out there. So sorry I missed it. Yeah, it looked like a good time. Yeah. Seeing the nitro caco videos. Yeah. Yeah, those are always some just beautiful historic cars and there's nothing quite like a, a good nitro cackle yep now where do you get all your fire safety equipment from john um i've been going through i uh, really like their helmet designs and their fire suits been great I think they're, they're more affordable than what simpson is is pumping out uh so just about all my stuff is in place. Now, in, throughout your drag racing career, what, what milestones have you reached so far? Um, let's see, milestones that I've reached so far. Um, I mean, uh, when I was a kid, was my first time winning a track championship. So, I won my first track championship when I was ten years old. Um, and then just getting licensed in the different cars throughout my time, and then this last weekend, you know, driving the the nostalgia top fuel car. That was probably my my biggest and funnest uh, accomplishment that I've had so far. All right, now throughout your career, have you had any accidents or close calls? Um, I mean, nothing, nothing really big. Um. You know, I've had some motors blow up. I've had them get loose and almost hit the wall. Uh, but, but I never have. I've never wrecked a car. Um, just some close calls, but nothing nothing huge. Um, you know, the biggest crashes I've ever had is uh, I raced uh, road race and motorcycles for the last few years. And, and I've, in the two years that I was doing that, I've wrecked myself way more than I ever have in a, in a, in a dragster. Well, knock on wood, John, you won't have any accidents. Yeah, they're pretty safe overall, but, you know, the, as we get into the top fuel stuff, I'm, I'm sure there's some fireballs to be had in the, in the future here, so uh, <laughs> it's 
Alright, All right, you ready for a few uh, fun questions here? Yeah, you got it. Uh, outside the sport of drag racing, do you have any other hobbies? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, <clears throat> aviation and motorcycles. Uh, so, for my day job, and I'm a F-16 fighter pilot, so aviation is a big part of that. And that's a huge time commitment with all the deployments and training that's involved. Um, also own a aerobatic plane, a Pitts STC. So basically what you see in the air shows, go flip upside down and put on a show there, low, low altitude aerobatics. And then I uh, got a collection of motorcycles. So I've been road racing, duels and Harleys. And I uh, got my, my uh, dyno that I ride on the street. So <laughs> Between those two and drag racing, um, man, I'm, that, that basically fills up my schedule. Now, have you won any trophies in drag racing? Um, trophies? Um, man, I've won some bracket races. Um, when I was a kid, I won that track championship. Um, but that's really it. I mean, life's kind of, as I went through college and I went through all that flight training for the Air Force, that's kind of really limited the amount of drag racing tonight been able to do in the last 10 years so i think the my big trophies are uh things i'm looking forward to in the future um and and hopefully all with the with the fuel car so um not much it's been it's been a while besides some winning some bracket races but i'm uh, looking forward to what's out there in the future all right now if you were able to do time traveling and go back in the time would you do anything differently with the drag racing career Oh, anything different? Yeah. No, I. I don't think I do anything different right now. And I've been, I think, uh, I think we've done a great job of taking advantage of every opportunity that's presented itself. Like I, I would say, no to any awesome opportunity that came our way, and I haven't so far. Um, so I've been really happy with how it's gone. Um, and I think there's still a lot of really cool things on the on the near horizon. So I'm really looking forward to what's going to be happening. All right, ne next subject is food. What's your favorite food? Favorite food? Yeah. Um, man, I like ice cream a lot. Ice cream, pizza. What do you like on your pizza? Those are going to be the favorites. Uh, pepperoni, sausage, some green pepper, anything tasty. You have a favorite ice cream? Ice cream, uh, um, sure, some uh, cookies and cream is great. Now, what's your favorite beverage? Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a Scotch guy, so some Lagavulin in sixteen. That's always uh, stocked in the house. And if I'm sitting down at the end of a long day, that's uh, I'm always pour a nice glass of that. Now, how about non-alcoholic beverage? Um, if it's not, then I basically just drink water. I drink. Really nothing except water and a lot of one. Right now? Yeah. Why Yeah. Okay. So what what you have a favorite movie of all time? Um well growing up, you know, I just wanted to be a fighter pilot my entire life, of course, you know, like Top Gun was, was always a thing. Watched that just like non stop growing up and that was a big influence. Um no, nowadays, I can't really say that anymore, so nowadays, I don't know, I'm still waiting for, uh, I don't have, I wouldn't say I have a favorite nowadays, but Top Gun was probably a growing up. Alright, now, do you support, support our president? Yeah. He supports Trump? Alright, All right. now, what, what's your uh, favorite music? Favorite, favorite music? Yeah, what? Um... Yeah, it changes. I like I like metal. I like uh, like Metallica, Avenged Sevenfold, but um, yeah, I like country as well, bluegrass. Um, mix it up, really. I like all kinds of music. So, but those are probably my my go tos. Now, for country, you like older country or newer country? I like um, I like a mix of the two, to be honest. Um, so been listening to uh, like a group called White Buffalo. I think they're from the UK, but they're kind of like a bluegrass folk kind of country music that I've been digging. And there's some um, some other 
more modern bands that mix in with the same kind of style. So I like, I wouldn't say I like one or the other more. It's just, uh, I like, I like all of it. Now about the band Metallica, you like older Metallica or newer, newer Metallica? Um, I mean, some of Metallica is like mid year stuff, late in nineties, like, really. and they've had decades worth of great music come out, but song? I like, honestly, I like all of it. I'd say the Black, Black Album's got to be my favorite, but um, I was a yeah, big but, fan of uh, like Load and Reload when that came out too. You have a favorite go-to Metallica song? Go-to? Oh man, um, maybe uh, Sanitarium always seems to end up on the playlist. Ah yeah, the Master, yeah, master of Puppets yeah, album. Yeah. You bet. Can't go wrong with the Master of Puppets album. No, no, it's uh, that's one that's gonna stand the test of time. There. So, so how many years have you been in Air Force now? Uh, it's been seventeen years now. Wow. Cute, seventeen. So I joined right when I was still in high school. Uh, so I was seventeen years when I enlisted. Was enlisted for ten years, then got commissioned to go to flight school. Um, and then, yeah, it's been six, seven years since since uh, that started. Well, once again, like I told you earlier, thanks for serving. Yeah, absolutely. It's always, always my pleasure. Now, when you were growing up, growing up as a kid, did you have a favorite cartoon to watch? Favorite cartoon? Yeah, when you were a kid. Um, I mean, I always liked, you know, Bugs Bunny, of course, and uh, DuckTales. That was always one I really enjoyed. Uh, but those those older cartoons have always, man, I think they're... Uh, there are words that it's nothing like what's on today. So that stuff is, that stuff's always a, a favorite of mine. Now, at, at the track on a, on a race day, how's your eating habits? Do you eat, you eat regularly or do you eat very lightweight to the races that are done? Um, usually, usually my eating habits are, uh, I eat once or twice a day. So I'll have like a small breakfast and then usually like when I get really hungry, uh, medium to large meal. And then they'll carry me through the rest of the day. But we're just, you're so busy all day long that you just, you don't have a lot of time to stop and cook in. And uh, it's just it's time consuming and you got a lot, all this other stuff going on. So usually one big meal will carry me through the day. All right. Most embarrassing moment on the starting line. Um, um, so when my first race back from, Pilot training. I haven't I haven't raced in three years. Uh, first race back, we hop in the rear engine dragster and go bracket race, and uh, end up winning the race. But so we, I won uh, top ET, and now we're doing the top versus mod um, race for for the money. And I remember leaving on the the guy had like a double oh four light, and then get about uh, two three hundred feet down and accidentally hit the trans brake. And there's nothing that will stop you faster than locking up a trans break <laughs> and then just handing the race over to the guy uh, just like that when you got significant money on there. And you basically, you know, I wouldn't say you had the race won, but you got a real good shot at taking taking uh, everything home with you. But instead, I just lock up a trans break and come to a screeching halt. So that one uh, was definitely probably the most embarrassing moment. All right. Now, what, what's been your... Fu- Fondest memory of your drag racing career? Fondest memory? Um, well, I'll, I'll give you two. I mean, uh, when I was a kid, 10, 11 years old, going down to Indy and uh, just being in, uh, uh, just being at Indianapolis with the family and competing on that stage, that was pretty cool when you were a kid. And then as an adult, this last weekend was probably the coolest thing that I've ever done is uh, there's just years and years of prep and opportunities that um, kind of built itself up to being able to drive that top fuel car and to have my my dad there, my wife there, Kenny Hubesh, the entire Diamond Day race team, all supporting and rooting me on. And first time hitting the throttle, being able to hit a six second pass. That's uh, that was probably the coolest moment so far. Now, how important do you think it is for uh, kids to come out and watch drag racing? Um, how important? 
important it is. I don't know if it's how important it is, but it's uh, if you are going to do it, I think it's great. I mean, as far as a family sport and uh, just a great sport to get involved in, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. So, I mean, I would be supportive of any kind of sport that some kids want to get involved with, but if you're going to choose drag racing, I think you're making a great choice. Yeah, the, the kids are the future of the sport. Yeah, absolutely. You always need that younger generation, and it's good to have junior drag racing to start developing them young. And uh, it does have, seem to have a good younger following as well as an older generation to be able to pass it down as well. Well, John, I want to thank you for taking time to do this interview tonight. Yeah, no, I appreciate uh you, you bringing me on, and it was great talking to you. you have any uh, final words, thank yous, any kind of stuff before we close? Um, I mean, I, I've mentioned a bunch of names so far on this phone call, but uh, to everybody that's been part of uh, part of the teams that I'm associated with, all the guys that have uh, given me mentorship throughout the years, you know, Kenny, Kenny Hubatch, um, Mark Smith, Diamond Dave Miller, Dale Sir. Uh, the whole Diamond Dave team, Mike, Steve, Rick, uh, my dad, of course. Um, you know, big thanks to all those guys. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Um, so when, when will, will you be at the Grove next? Probably uh, Labor Day weekend? Yeah, Labor Day weekend is going to be, well, no, I'll be uh, in two weeks. In two weeks, we'll be down with the Dr. Jekyll on the red car. And then Labor Day weekend, we'll have the fuel car down there. Okay, sounds good. Well, hopefully we'll see how they want one of those events yeah absolutely looking forward to it and and uh good talking to you you have a great night john yeah you as well thank you bye-bye